Okay, so uh, we're going into the final 10 minutes of the day. Um, I've saved the best till last. I know that you've all been hanging out to actually hear all about data legislation, your favorite topic. Um, but I thought it was really important that we do give an update because uh, as you've heard throughout the day, there's all this fantastic stuff that you can do with data. More than ever have we been able to really understand the consumer by using data in a clever way. But that data is under threat. And um, if you don't know already, um, then you should know that there are changes afoot as far as data protection legislation is concerned. So this issue has actually been rumbling since about 2012. Um, so it was decided that actually the data protection regulations that we had in the UK and well, throughout Europe weren't sufficient to protect the consumer in the online environment. So the powers that be in Europe said, OK, well, let's have a complete review and let's uh, look after the consumer when they're in the online space. But you know what? While we're about it, why don't we just look at the whole thing and look at the consumer both on and offline? So uh, there are potentially some broad reaching changes afoot. So at the moment, uh, the legislation for direct marketing and uh, data protection is a directive. So what that means is uh, each country is free to interpret the letter of the law in the way that they think is best for their own country. The plan is actually to change that to a regulation, which means that however the terms are laid out in the uh, text, have to be followed to the letter. And if they're not followed to the letter, there are going to be quite draconian fines for businesses that are not following it. So this is going to be quite a big change. There's going to be changes to consent. So at the moment, if you plan to um, either send them a catalogue or you plan to phone them up, as long as you let them know that you're sharing data with third parties and that um, if they don't opt out, they will receive something, that's fine. Um, if you want to email them or text them, you need to explicitly say, would you like us to email or text you? But the EU uh, Parliament would like to actually get that change to uh, opt in for everybody. If you're going to be profiling customers or sharing data with third parties, at the moment, uh, as long as you've just got the right opt-in or opt-out permissioning, that should be fine. Um, but going forward, there needs to be some form of explicit consent that the consumer actually says, yes, that is OK to profile me. That is OK to share my data with third parties. If you're tracking them, um, their IP address and what they're doing on the web, at the moment, uh, you don't need additional permissions. As long as you told them you're doing it, that's fine. Again, there's going to be this ex need for explicit consent. If somebody comes to you and says, uh, what data did you hold on me? Um, you are legally obliged to tell them, but you can cover the admin process with a £10 charge. Going forward, that needs to be free. So that will cost your businesses some money. And um, if somebody actually says, I do not want you to hold my information. Right now, you can flag that person, that contact, to say, this person does not want to be contacted. But you hold their record so you know that for the future. Going forward, they would like to change it to, you have to delete all record of that person. So quite, if that person is presented to you in another form, or that name and address is presented in another form, quite how you know to suppress them, I don't know. Um, and how this is protecting the consumer, we don't know. So quite far-reaching changes. They haven't gone through yet. This is just a proposal right now. Um, now, as far as the uh, process is concerned, there are three parties involved. And three parties need to agree for this to all pass into law. There's a European Commission. Now, these are the people that put the proposal um, out in, the, out in the, the wider world and said, this is, this is what we think should happen. There's a European Parliament. This is a bit like the equivalent of the House of Commons um, that we have in our country. And then there's the Council of Justice and Home Affairs Ministers, which is a bit like the, the House of Lords. And all three have to agree. Now, each party has their own text and their own version of that text and, and, and has different interpretations of how they would like it to be. Once each party has decided on the, the, uh, the wording of their text, the, the, there is a coming together of the three parties, and that coming together is called a trilogue. The bill can only be passed if the trilogue agree, and then once 
everybody's agreed there's a two-year grace period for everybody to implement whatever regulations everybody decides on. So what's happening? Well, the European Parliament actually uh, made their decision. They chose their text and they chose the least business-friendly text, uh, which is all of those points that I just outlined. They all said, yeah, yeah, that we, we want all of these draconian points to be uh, the way forward. They agreed on that text on the 12th of March 2014. The Council of Ministers are actually pushing for a much more business-friendly regulation. Um, they really don't agree. The Minister for Germany does not agree with the Minister for the UK, who doesn't agree with the Minister for France. They've actually been meeting for a year, and all their meetings have been inconclusive because they, they are just so far apart from each other. They met again in March 2015, and it seems that you know, their, their whole discussions are starting to fall apart. Activ activists actually uh, leaked some of their suggestions, and some of the ministers are actually saying, we don't want it to be this draconian, because this is not good for, for, for business. Uh, so if data is processed by third parties, we think that that's fine to not have explicit consent if it's deemed to be legitimate business interest. And there is an interpretation that says, if you're going to mail somebody, that could be considered legitimate business interest. So there's sort of little chinks in the armour that are starting to, uh, to appear. As far as profiling is concerned, the ministers are now saying, actually, if this is of general public interest, then we think profiling is fine. Again, is sending them a catalogue, is contacting them through, um, th through the internet deemed to be of general public interest? We, we don't know. And if a browser's default setting is uh, set to enable tracking, that actually that's explicit consent enough and that you really shouldn't need anything else. And if people don't go and change their settings, that, then that's fine. So they're starting to say, this is what we want now. They're meeting again in uh, June 2015, but because they're all quite far apart, the chances of them actually coming to agreement in June, according to James Lawson, who is the legal advisor at the DMA, he said it, you know, he doesn't hold out much hope that they are going to come up with their agreement. But should they do that, um, then the three texts will all be agreed, the trialogue will come together, and they'll start negotiations at the end of this year. It could take three to six months. It could take a very lo lot longer if the three versions of the text are really quite different. Um, this negotiation process has been rumbling on since 2012. This could go on quite a lot longer. Um, but should they reach agreement at the end of 2016, then the two-year grace period means that um, everything will have to be implemented by middle of 2018. So I just wanted you to, to, to know that this is happening. I wouldn't get too concerned about it because back in 2012, we all went, oh, oh my word, this is just awful. Our whole industry is going to die in two years. And of course, here we are um, <coughs> three years later and nothing has changed. Um, but you do need to know it's coming and something will come through, um, whether it's the wa watered down version that the ministers want or the more draconian version that the European Parliament want, we're yet to see. But there are lots of people that can help you if you need advice. Um, you can contact the DMA. Uh, the Direct Commerce Association can also give you general advice. There's um, a business called Op4, um, a specialist called Rosemary Smith that can help you. If you want to um, think about the wording um, of, of your um, opt-in, opt-out statements, then, then she can help you. She also works with somebody called David Cole um, from the Data um, Permission Benchmark, um, again, that's doing quite a lot of work on, uh, on permission wording. So what should you do? Well, the ICO and the DMA say, well, in, in, because nothing's decided, there's just no point in changing anything that you're doing right now. But make sure that data is a priority. And if you're building new systems, make sure you're building in the fact that you need to get permission um, and make data protection a priority in that build. Make sure you know what the current legislation is, so at least you're compliant with the, the rules as they are now. Um, a lot of people do think it is going to be moving to opt-in eventually. Um, you know, whether, it, whether it's 2018 or, or later, it probably is going to be opt-in of some form. 
Wording plays a huge role in that. Um, if you make it sound very attractive that people will be able to get third party offers and that they can get promotions and discounts, then they're more likely to uh, opt in than if you say, I assume you don't want to receive more direct mail from other people. Um, which we, and we have seen wording like that. And be ready for data breach notifications. You will need to be able to tell a consumer what information you hold on them and where you got that information. If you can't lay your hands on that information right now, you might want to at least work out how you do that going forward. Um, so that's just the advice. Um, so again, don't be, don't be overwhelmed by this, it's, it's, you know, it, but it is coming and it's coming fairly soon.